This video was brought to you by Brilliant. If you live in Europe, it's almost certain that you've boarded a flight run by Ryanair. With 226 destinations across the continent and over 2,500 flights a day, Ryanair has effectively dominated the European airline industry, rapidly becoming one of the biggest carriers at essentially all of Europe's major airline hubs. Now, we released a video explaining how they managed to do this earlier in the week, where we ran through their ruthless cost-cutting, super-regular flights, aircraft standardization, quick turnaround times, bare-bones service, cheap airports, and fueling tactics. So if you want to learn more about that and about Ryanair's history, then that video is linked in the description. But those aren't the only reasons that Ryanair have succeeded. They've also been able to capture brand new markets by launching their own new subsidiaries. That's right, even if you haven't boarded a plane that looks like this, and honestly, how haven't you? It's still possible that you've flown on one of Ryanair's sub-brands. So let's unpack who Ryanair really are and how their subsidiaries really work. <laughs> Ryanair itself launched back in 1987, initially just ferrying people from Ireland to London. But since deregulation in the EU in the 1990s, the airline has been traveling all over Europe. However, in recent years, their route map has opened up yet further as Ryanair went from a single airline to a group boasting five different airlines. Now, the original airline, Ryanair, was joined by new Ryanair Sun in November 2017, a new Polish-based airline. The objective of this launch was seemingly threefold. To increase the company's reach in the region and boost their Polish flight map, to reduce costs, and to swap regular staff members for self-employed contractors who, under Polish law, were allowed to conduct essentially the same work while holding on to fewer rights. Regardless, the name of this Polish subsidiary didn't end up sticking around for long, thank goodness, because that logo honestly makes me want to cry. With them rebranding as Buzz in 2019 in an attempt to differentiate themselves from their parent airline, a move which led to a new, not significantly more pleasant logo and an actually almost worse livery. But maybe other people like slightly possess stinging insects more than I do. Regardless, since then, Ryanair has fully transferred their Polish operations over to the new subsidiary. This means that Buzz was handed over all of Ryanair's routes in and out of Warsaw, their primary base in the country, with them now running all routes on behalf of the Ryanair group which is certainly good for their bottom line, considering the cost-cutting that's allowed under Polish law. 2018 then saw the next Ryanair Group airline announcement, but this time it was because of Brexit. As an Irish airline, and thus an EU airline, Ryanair immediately realised that they probably have issues after Brexit, given that their biggest hub wasn't even in Ireland, but instead was London Stansted. As such, the group launched another new subsidiary, Ryanair UK. By the way, they weren't the only airline affected by Brexit like this, with a number of other airlines, including rival EasyJet, being forced to set up subsidiaries like EasyJet Europe and EasyJet Switzerland. Anyway, in December 2018, Ryanair UK received their first aircraft, which today has been joined by 11 others all 737-800s in standard Ryanair style. Now, having temporarily stopped all domestic flights following Brexit and a dispute with the UK's Civil Aviation Authority, the airline resumed domestic flights handled by the newly formed Ryanair UK in December 2021. It wasn't long after that they launched their next airline, this time Malta Air, not to be confused with Air Malta, the country's existing flag carrier. Interestingly, this airline was actually set up with the help of Malta's government, with them supporting Ryanair's entry into the market in order to bring more tourists to the island. Since then, the airline has expanded significantly, now boasting 158 aircraft and planning 66 routes out of their base at Malta International Airport. 
In fact, the airline's been so successful that they've now expanded beyond just flights to and from Malta as initially planned, with them now offering a number of other routes across Europe. They've not only launched new routes, allowing the Ryanair Group to increase their grip on the Mediterranean region, but the new airline has also taken over Ryanair's existing flights in and out of Malta, and they're now even operating a majority of Ryanair Group's routes in and out of Milan. Thus far then, Ryanair has launched three subsidiaries. The very closely aligned Ryanair UK, which was merely a protection against Brexit, Buzz to better service Polish markets and save some cash, and Malta Air, in collaboration with the Maltese government. However, Ryanair hasn't just been setting up their own new airlines, they've also bought existing ones. Lauda Motion was an Austrian airline which was established in 2004. Back then, it was known as Amira Air, and offered charter flights for executive travel across the continent. It was then purchased by Austrian F1 driver Niki Lauda in 2016, and rebranded to Lauda Motion, before falling into financial difficulties in 2018. Later in the year, Ryanair stepped in, with them purchasing 25% of Lauda Motion in 2018, which they then increased to 75% by the end of the year, and then to 100% by 2019, at which point the brand was rebranded again simply to Lauda. To make matters yet more complicated, in October 2020, Austrian-based Lauda ceased operation and handed over all of their assets and operations to a new business called Lauda Europe, a business which was still owned by Ryanair Group, but this time out of Malta rather than Austria. Now, Ryanair said that this decision was in order to reduce costs, including, rather transparently, revealing that they were aiming to reduce their tax bill by moving the business to Malta, which maybe also explains why they were so keen to launch Malta Air and hand over Ryanair's existing Maltese routes to the airline. Anyway, at the same time, they announced that they continue to operate out of their existing bases, including Palma de Mallorca, as well as two other bases that Lauda had threatened to shut down. Dusseldorf and their old home of Vienna. Since then, though, the airline has essentially been folded into the Ryanair brand from a consumer perspective, with their website redirecting to Ryanair and the airline essentially just operating some of Ryanair's existing routes, generally still within Central Europe. So those are Ryanair's five subsidiaries. Ryanair, Ryanair UK, Buzz, Malta Air and Lauda. Now, obviously, these plans to divide up the company were disrupted somewhat by the COVID pandemic. But data from immediately after the pandemic shows that, as expected, these new subsidiaries have taken away flights from the main carrier, but also increased the total number of routes and flights run by the Ryanair group. Over the last year or so, these subsidiaries have somewhat settled into a rhythm, with Ryanair still accounting for the majority of flights in the group, Malta Air picking up about a third, and Buzz making up much of the remaining share, about 10%. So when you next book a flight on Ryanair's website, look a little more closely, because it's very possible that you're actually going to be boarding one of their subsidiaries instead. Fortunately, though, with so many planes in the air at one time, you're not going to be waiting long until your next Ryanair group flight. But while we're waiting, it only takes a few minutes every day to massively improve your skills and safeguard your career against artificial intelligence. That's by investing in your own human intelligence. And that's where Brilliant.org comes in. Brilliant.org is the best way to learn maths and computer science in a fun and interactive way. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational and advanced maths to AI, data science, neural networks, decision making, and more, with new lessons added monthly. That logical decision making course is super interesting too, using principles from maths and science to help you reach your own decisions. And I'm not naming any names, but perhaps some politicians ought to get a Brilliant account. Anyway, you can try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days by clicking our link in the description. Plus, the first 200 TLDR viewers to do that will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for your support, and thanks for watching TLDR.